Now, do you find yourself getting frustrated trying to customize the look of the WooCommerce product pages and the general reliance upon page builders like Elementor? I know I do, and that's why I'm excited to take a look at Woo Builder Blocks from Poodle Press. Now, this add-on lets you not only use Gutenberg to customize your products and product pages, but also create templates that you can quickly assign to those products. What's even more useful is that it plays really nicely with other Gutenberg Blocks plugins like Cadence Blocks or Stackable. This should open up even more design options. Okay, so that's the introduction out of the way. Let's go ahead and see how Woo Builder Blocks works and create some new WooCommerce designs for ourselves. Now, once you've gone ahead and installed the Woo Builder Blocks plugin, you'll notice that you get this message pop up saying that they want you to install the required plugin, Caxton. Now, this is coming from the same developers, and what this does is it gives you the ability to create some more comprehensive layouts, different columns, and things like that. You don't need to use it, you do have to install it, but you don't need to use it. You can go ahead and use any other kind of layered block plugin that you want, like Cadence, Stack, all those kinds of things. So, all you need to do is make sure this is installed and activated. Once that's done, that's going to take you over now to ask you to go through the whole process of working with Freemius. You can skip this because this is a free plugin, so you can skip that and bypass that completely. If you want to go ahead and find out a little bit more about Caxton, how you can use it, then you can go ahead and watch this little video. I'm going to ignore that completely for now. What we're going to do is we're going to open up the product section and take a look at our products because this is where we're going to work with the Woo Builder blocks. Now the first thing we need to cover is how to start using WooBuilder blocks to customize your products and what options we have to do just that. So let's open this beanie with the logo. And to start working with the WooBuilder blocks, we need to basically replace the tiny MCE editor you can see inside here with the WooBuilder blocks, basically all being done directly through Gutenberg. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this enable WooBuilder blocks button. Then we get asked, what do we want to do? Do you want to start completely from scratch, use a pre-built template, one of the templates supplied alongside WooBuilder blocks, or once you've gone ahead and created some of your own templates, you could use that to start things off. And it'll list the different templates you have inside here. Or we can just say continue to use the default editor if we've opened this up by mistake. Let's take a look first of all at the pre-built templates. So let's choose pick a template. And this will then show us the different templates we can use as a starting point. Now you could take these and then edit them, do what you want with them, or you can just use them for inspiration or completely ignore them. Now, if you press for time or you just want to see how these things are actually made up, then you can select any of these predefined layouts. For me, for this example, we're going to ignore those. Just wanted to show you that they are there should you want to use them. Instead, let's just go ahead and start from scratch and see how you'd build up one of these designs for yourself. So to start building your page layout, all we need to do is use the block inserter from the left hand side and if we scroll down we'll find we've got a new section inside here for Woo blocks and there we go there's our Woo builder blocks and as you can see quite a lot of different options inside here we can choose from to start creating things you'll also notice that we've got the template option so if we've decided we actually wanted to use one of those templates we could just simply insert this block pick our template and then start from there however you can also do things like split testing you can insert any of the normal elements to do with the product, so your ratings, your description, your title, images, and so on. You've also got some quite useful things like a sale countdown option inside here. So if you wanted to create that sense of scarcity, you could use that inside here. And we've also got things like the product reviews, image carousel, request a quote, and so on. So some pretty useful different tools to create things. So let's take a look at just inserting some options in here to start off with. Let's start by adding in some images. So let's scroll all the right way down and we can choose between the product images or we could choose an image carousel if you wanted to. We'll choose the product images, we'll just insert this into our design and then once you've done that you then have the options on the right hand side to manage exactly how this particular element is going to look, this block. So things like the layout, you can choose your image sizes and so on, apply some radiuses. If you're using videos you can drop a link inside there and select an image for that. You can control the appearance to a certain extent not a huge amount of control inside here. And you know, you've got the basic things that you need for this particular element. And then we can kind of repeat that process. Let's go ahead and add the title in this time for the product. So we can grab our product title, we'll select and insert that. And you can see there's our beanie with logo. And now if we want to, we can adjust the appearance on there. And you can just work with the, the theme defaults if you want to, or you can override those by setting the alignment and things. And the font, again, you can choose what you want from you, or you can let it kind of default and fall back to your standard fonts that are set up as part of the theme that you're using. It's up to you. You can control the font size, the text color, and that's about it, really. You know, there's not a lot of control over 
various different aspects, but a lot of this is going to be picked up from the theme that you're using. But I would still like to see some more granular control if that was an option. So with that in place, let's go ahead and insert the description. And we can choose between the long description or the short description. For here, we'll just use the, the long description, drop that inside there. And then we can just simply insert our description inside there. So there's a little bit of filler text in there and you can see that's inserted. So the final thing we're going to add in is just the price. So let's just search for price and you can see we've got book build up product price. We'll click to add that inside there and there's our price. And again, we can go ahead and we can control the appearance of this, the colors, those kinds of things. So let's just make this a bit larger so it stands out a bit better. There we go. And now if you want to, you can reposition these. Now I'm just using a free little plugin that allows me to do this a little easier. So I'm gonna drag that up to the top and you can see there's our price. Let's select our beanie logo. We'll just come back in. We'll come to the settings inside this title and we'll make some changes to that. Just make that a little larger. It's the title at the end of the day. So let's go for something like 30. And there's the basics of creating your own design. Now at the moment, this all looks fairly basic because all I've literally done is stack one various different block on top of the other to create what is not a particularly interesting looking layout. But this is where the beauty of working with this particular plugin comes in. You could use the Caxton plugin that you have to install as part of it, and that gives you more control over the layout. But personally, I would prefer to be working with something like cadence blocks or stackable or generate blocks, any of those kind of block builders, and then you can use those to create more intricate designs. So let's just take a quick look at how easy it is to start to integrate the two of these together and just give you a little bit more control, a little bit more flexibility over what you want to create. Now for ease, I've already just gone ahead and removed all those various different elements we started with. So let's go ahead now and take a look. Let's open this up and these are our cadence blocks. So now we can use things like the rows, the columns, those kinds of things to create a little bit more of an interesting kind of layout. So let's just choose the row layout and now we can create something from here. So let's just say we want to use this 50-50 and we'll just use that as an option. And there's our starting point. So now we've got a lot more control using this for our layout side of things. So let's start by adding our image onto the left hand side. So let's just do a search for images and we're going to say we want the product images. There's our product image. And again, all the same controls over on the right hand side now to control the image itself. But we also have on top of that the ability to work with controlling the container and the various different elements that's part of Cadence Blocks. And now let's go to the right hand side. Let's come into here and we're just going to go for price and we'll just add that inside there. And you can see there's our price option. And we can just keep on adding inside here until we create something just a little bit more unique. So let's just go for the short description inside here. Now you can see that drops in the content inside there and then we can come in and do anything else we want. So let's go and add the add to cart button in. There you go, add to cart. We'll insert that in there. And there's our add to cart button. And we can carry on just adding whatever we want. So we could say we want the rating inside here. We'll say product rating. There we go. So there's nothing inside you at the moment. So this just drops in a placeholder to say that when there's a rating for this product or any other products, then you can just simply have that placeholder display the actual content on the live end of the site. And now what we can do is we can just go ahead and start adding more in. So let's just say we want to add another block inside here. So let's go ahead and add in another row layout. Gives us a single row this time. There we go. And now we can go ahead and do things like add in additional sections. So we could stack these on top of each other. So let's just say we want to use the tabs and we're going to use the tabs option, which is part of Cadence. So we'd insert that inside here. We can then choose the design that we want to work with. There's our tabs. We can click, we'll get rid of the second one, third one, sorry. We'll come inside here and we'll just set this to be description and we'll set this to be reviews. And now we can do is we can just simply open this up and go ahead to a search for description. And we'll say we put the long description inside there. So obviously there's nothing much inside you at the moment. But let's just replace that with a little bit of filler text. There we go. So pretty cool. Come into your review section and we can do the same inside there. So we can just expand this out. We'll do a search for reviews and we can do, there you go. We'll build a product reviews. Obviously nothing in there at the moment. So now what we're doing is we're stacking these on top of each other and we get the control of working with the Woo Builder blocks to create our designs for Woo content. And then we've also got the power and flexibility of a block builder like Cadence Blocks to create something just a little bit more unique. Now, this isn't a particularly great design, but should give you enough information to get you started to see how these things can work in combination with each other. Now that we've taken a look at how to design your product page layout, how about turning our design into a template ready to apply to the existing and future products? So to access the ability to save this design that we've created as a template is really easy. 
What you need to do is come to the product option, choose status and visibility if it's not already open, and you can see we have an option in there that says save as template. All we need to do is select that and give it a name. So we're just gonna call this sample template and click okay. And that's our template saved. Now that's our design completed, let's go ahead and assign it to a couple of product categories and see the effects of doing just that. So to do this, we just simply need to go into the option underneath the product section called All Templates, which is part of WooBuilder Blocks. And inside there, you can see all of the templates that we've created. Now I've created one previously called a two column layout, and you can see that's been associated with the accessories, clothing, hoodies, and t-shirts. Let's delete that for now. And let's just edit our sample templates. So we're gonna click on edit, and inside there, we can now choose where we want to associate this. So this is gonna show us all of the different product categories that we have. And all I need to do now is choose the categories that I want to associate this with. So we'll choose clothing, accessories, hoodies, t-shirts. And we'll also say hats as well. And click update. And now you can see this tells us that's where this template has been associated. So now anywhere on our site that has a product in those categories or in any of those categories, it will use our new template. So let's take a look at that in action. Let's go ahead and open up our products. We can see that we've got this logo collection that's inside clothing, so let's just open that up to view it. And you see, this is now using the design that we just created. There's our review section, our description section. You can see there's our add to cart button. You can also see that any variations associated with a product are also listed inside here, so all being pulled in for us. So pretty cool and very easy to set up. Now, while templates give us an easy way to assign our designs to other categories and products inside those categories, it does have one big limitation that may be a game changer for many of you. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. So we're back into the all template section. If we open this template up, you can see we have no design options inside here. We can see what it's associated with. We can change any associated categories, but we can't change the design. Let me just go back over into all products. And let's open up the one we created this design for originally. Now you can see we can enable the Woo blocks. You can see our design is basically gone because we associated it with that template. We can enable the Woo blocks builder and we can choose to pull our template in. So we'll say we'll use our sample template. And you can see everything now is pulled in. But if you make changes to this, nothing will actually happen to the template itself. It'll only change on this specific entry. So for example, if we come in and we make a change to the look of this total amount of money it's going to cost you for the product and we'll just change this over there we go so we've made some changes to that we'll update this and we'll go ahead and preview this particular product so let's open this up and you see there's the changes being reflected inside this however if we go to a product that's in the same category using the same template and we'll open this one up for example you see everything is using the same default template. So the template can't be updated. And that's one of the key things that I find is a bit of a limiting factor with this. So I would love to see the ability to have your template editable so you can make changes globally then and anything that uses that template is going to see those changes reflected across it. Now, before I wrap things up and give you my conclusions, as well as my pros and cons, let's talk about money. How much is WooBuilder Blocks and what options are there for different licenses? So as you can see, there are currently two options for licenses. You've got the WooBuilder Blocks, which gives you X number of sites, one year support and updates and a 14 day money back guarantee. Or you can go for the e-commerce bundle that bundles in pretty much all of the portal press plugins and so on. So up to you which way you want to go with this. I'm only using the Woo Builder blocks at this point. So you can see it's $49 per year for one site, which is a little bit expensive. But in all honesty, if you have more sites, that's where the thing kind of gets fairly cheap. So for example, five sites literally only jumps up an extra 20 ish dollars. And then if you go up to 25 sites, you can see it's 99 and you can go to unlimited sites at 199. And there are lifetime options in here if you want to grab those. So you can see 199, 265 and 25 site license for 595. So if you've got a need for this, then there's your options price wise. I think limiting the lifetime option to 25 sites maximum for that particular price is a good business move. It means at least the company moving forward have enough sustainable income to be able to provide support and so on and develop the product. Giving a lifetime license for unlimited sites can be a little bit difficult when you want to keep on making revenue if you offer a lifetime option ongoing as opposed to a short period of time. 
So first of all, it works great with other Gutenberg blocks like Cadence or Stackable. It's incredibly easy to use. All the key features you need to build a WooCommerce product page design are included. The need for Caxton, the plugin to be installed. Once the template is created, you can't edit it and have that apply to all your pages and posts using that design. I'd like to see more styling options. For example, when you input in metadata, you can't set them to be vertical as opposed to just horizontal. I'd also love to see it support other WooCommerce page templates. WooBuilder Blocks has been around for quite a while, so it's not new and therefore has had plenty of time to mature. It makes customizing your WooCommerce product pages incredibly easy and plays very well with your preferred WordPress theme and block plugins. On the downside though, the fact you can't edit your templates after you've created them is a little frustrating and limiting when you want to make a design update in the future. I'd also love to see the plugin expanded to give us control over other aspects of WooCommerce, but I can see that it may be an overlap with the default WooCommerce blocks here. Still, it would be nice to have one central location to manage all your design files and templates for your online stores. However, all in all, WooBuilder Blocks is a solid plugin and if you're looking to stay away from the reliance on WordPress page builders to keep your site as lightweight as possible, this is worth adding to your shortlist. Now, as always, all the applicable links are in the description below and if you found this video useful, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. It really does help. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts and until next time, Take care.